Welcome to the Building Things with Machine Learning podcast. I'm Yashan Ho. In every episode, I interview people who are building really interesting products using machine learning. This week, I'm excited to have Yihua Liao of Netscope join. Yihua is the head of data science at Netscope, which is a leader in cybersecurity. Welcome, Yihua. Thank you. Thank you, Yashan. Uh, it's great. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Um, before we get into the ML side of things, would you just help our audience understand what Netscope does? Like, when does somebody run into it, uh, and what does it kind of do? Sure. So Netscope is a cybersecurity company headquartered in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, it provides uh, cloud security and um, malware protection, threat protection to uh, mid to uh, large size enterprise companies as well as uh, um, government offices. Um, the way we provide uh, cloud security to our, our customers is by, at a very high level, is by you know, routing um, our customers' corporate network traffic through our own data centers uh, around the world. Uh, this um, uh, uh, gives us very unique visibility into the corporate data movement, uh, as well as um, the users' cloud and, and website uh, usage uh, behavior. So it uh, has enabled us to do many interesting things. Uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, scanning files for sensitive uh, information, um, which is something that you know, nowadays many companies care about you know, as they move their data to the, uh, to the cloud. And also, uh, uh, we scan files for um, malware, uh, make sure that um, the employees are uh, sending, uh, um, you know, not sending malicious uh, malware to to other people, mm -hmm. either within the company or outside the company. And also, we uh, look for uh, phishing websites or other malicious websites and um, uh, help them identify malicious insiders. And uh, uh, nowadays, that's that's also a very mm. very. Um, uh, very big thing, uh, yeah. uh, uh, a threat for many companies. So, and um, and we use a lot of uh, machine learning models to do in, in almost all those use cases. So, so it sounds like one of the big innovations of Netscope was what you said that it routes all the traffic through your data center, and so mm -hmm. then it gives you kind of a fire hose of, of high quality data that you can analyze as opposed to. Uh, an, an older cybersecurity technique is that basically right? Yes, exactly, exactly. You know, the traditional um, security uh, tools and solutions are based on uh, uh, basically, you know, uh, based on a physical parameter, right? You have uh, companies used to pay a lot of money to buy um, uh, physical hardware, like a firewall uh, hardware, but now nowadays, you know, the the so the the physical perimeter is, doesn't exist anymore. So everything mm. has been moved to the cloud. So and, and which really requires um, really the, the the next generation a cloud native uh, cloud based uh, solution security solutions. Mm -hmm. yeah. It makes sense. And obviously, as ML people, when we hear that there's a new source of data, we think, great, <laughs> now we actually have clean data and a large amount of it to to throw at machine learning models. So um, let's dive into the ML side of things. Can you, I know there are examples you can cite from both computer vision and natural language processing. Could you start off by telling us some of the kind of novel functionalities that you've added by applying computer vision? Sure. Um, so we, as I mentioned earlier, we scan um, uh, files or scan corporate data for um, sensitive information, right? Mm -hmm. um, Companies uh, want to make sure that their uh, their customers' uh, data, uh, since especially you know PII uh, or, or PCI, PHI, those basically you know the sensitive info, personal uh, private information uh, is not um, uh, reviewed or leaked uh, to outside of the the the, um, the corporate world. So um, mm -hmm. so uh, we we would scan files for. Um, like for example, we've scanned images uh, for sensitive information. Uh, when I say sensitive information, it could be um, a passport uh, images, driver's mm -hmm. license images. As you can imagine, if you work at uh, a healthcare company, you probably have lots of um, uh, you know patients, um, you mm -hmm. know uh, 
IDs and health insurance cards, uh, SSN cards, and so on. Right. We want to make sure that those um, uh, those uh, that kind of sensitive information um, uh, won't be leaked. Uh, you know, as mm-hmm. a like a, a email attachment uh, mm-hmm. and so on. Right. So so we've developed computer vision. Um, uh, models uh, to identify those um, uh, special, you know, uh, sensitive information. So, um, uh, to be more, um, uh, con- uh, give you a concrete example. So, let's say a user is trying to download a file from the corporate uh, Google Drive, and mm-hmm. we would scan that uh, that that file, that image file. And to make sure that hey, you know, is this a passport? Um, you know, is this a mm-hmm. credit card, or uh, mm-hmm. is this a driver's license, and so on? So, uh, a very so if 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 you have some machine learning background, you will know that this is a typical you know um, image classification problem, right? Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, um, this is you know one of the main uh, use cases we have, the computer vision use cases that we have here in Netscope. Yeah. And then, um, assuming you have a perfectly trained classification model, what is the kind of final um, action that your software takes if it does detect like a driver's license or a passport? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, so we provide Nescope, um, you know, provides the intelligence to our customers, mm-hmm. and then it's up to our customer, typically the CISO teams, you know, the security and administrators. Uh, up to them to decide what actions they want to take. Uh, it could be, mm-hmm. uh, it could be block, could be uh, mm-hmm. block the data movement um, uh, on the spot. Uh, it could be that they want to give the the employee a, a warning message, say, "Hey, this may be mm-hmm. sensitive information. Uh, mm-hmm. um, are you sure you want to share this this file to to uh, somebody else?" Um, so yeah, it's really up to our customers' security team to decide what actions they want to take. Right. And also, so you provide the intelligence. That's it's right. Up to them to act and decide that's right. Happen. Yeah, and, and also some companies uh, care about, say, um, a passport and driver's license, and some companies like a banking industry um, a company, so uh, you know, financial services companies, they may care about more about. Uh, you know, bank statements or credit card mm-hmm. and so on. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But we provide the intelligence from our machine learning models. What were some of the challenges in getting some of those models off the ground? What, what's what's so hard at the end of the day of building a, a classifier for, you know, driver's licenses or, or passports? Yeah. Um, so I think um, the the first thing is, you know, high quality labor data, right? Uh, to mm-hmm. to build a, a, a classification model, you typically you need a lot of training data. Um, even if you do uh, transfer learning, you still need some you know very high quality um, data. So uh, this this was uh, one of the main challenges we we've had. I think you know uh, thanks to to uh, you guys, uh, Masterful AI, you know you helped us to get some to generate some of the synthetic uh, data like credit card images and so on. That really helped us. Um, develop our one of the the um, uh, uh, early versions of our computer vision uh, classification model, right? Mm-hmm. And and also um, uh, the there are other challenges such as um, uh, you know uh, our customers care about precision, uh, care about you know they, they mm-hmm. don't want to see too many false positives. As you can imagine, mm-hmm. you know if you. If if their employees uh, gets the warning message or uh, like uh, uh, a lot of uh, you know false positive uh, alerts every day, you know it could be very very annoying. So uh, we want to make sure that mm-hmm. our models have really high high precision, and and um, and also the uh, latency uh, performance is 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 really critical for us because mm. we make the decision. Uh, decision in real time. We help our customers make decision in real time. So mm-hmm. that means uh, our model needs to to generate the prediction within typically within uh, you know less than fifty milliseconds, for example, right? And, mm. and um, so uh, that by itself uh, can be a, a pretty big challenge right? to make sure that we have yeah, we have um, really uh, good infrastructure. Um, to support to to allow us to run computer vision models in real time. So, 
Interesting, interesting. Um, well, that's such a, a cool application. And one of the things I, I noticed was the use of recall and precision. I mean, we often, you know, learn about that in the context of, you know, drug or, or like disease positivity, and then we kind of forget about it. But in this case, that's so interesting that a, a high recall, but low precision might trigger, you know, lots of false positives and then just annoys users and the CISO just turns the feature off that's because right. everybody's complaining. So you have to be very careful about tuning your recall and precision. Yeah, so that, that's uh, right. Even that's if you have a few false negatives, yeah. you don't annoy people with a bunch of false positives. That's, uh, that's yeah. a cool application. How about on the um, NLP side? Uh, I know one of the cool things about your group is that you're applying not just CV, but NLP and tabular. Would you, would you like to tell us about one of your NLP applications? Yeah, we, we use um, a lot of uh, NLP um, uh, models to uh, the multiple uh, NLP use cases. Um, uh, the first one is the uh, for uh, again for identifying sensitive uh, inf sensitive information sensitive documents. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, some companies may care about um, uh, the the intellectual property uh, um, mm -hmm. document, like a patent uh, uh, mm -hmm. documents, right? Or some companies may care about the the um, tax forms or financial. The documents, mm -hmm. right? So, so we've used um, uh, some of the latest NLP uh, language models to train cl uh, document classification models to identify uh, things like uh, patent documents, um, uh, tax forms, resumes, mm -hmm. and so on. Right? Mm -hmm. Then, um, then our customers can decide, you know, uh, which. Or which documents that they may want to block or uh, or mm -hmm. uh, to give their employees some kind of warning message and so on. So yeah, um, yeah. so this is one. Uh, another NLP use case is uh, phishing, phishing uh, website mm -hmm. detection, um, and this is actually a very interesting uh, problem. You know, to um, uh, when. Uh, when someone is trying to visit a website, uh, we need to decide, uh, you know, in, in real time whether the, the website is is um, malicious or not, right? In, in order to provide mm -hmm. uh, protection to to our customers, and and um, how do you how do you identify a phishing website based on its content in mm -hmm. real time? It's, this is a very very challenging problem. You know, uh, so mm -hmm. far we've we've explored. Uh, looking at the the content, the text content of, of the website, uh, as well as the mm -hmm. so the the image uh, components of the website as well, right? Um, so, um, so yeah, the, the, these these are just some some examples of uh, NLP yeah. use cases, um, but there are definitely cool. a lot more. On the NLP side, are you using some of the large language models that have come out recently, the BERTs and GPT? We've, we've certainly uh, explored them. Um, you know, some of mm -hmm. them turned out to be um, very, very helpful, um, but some of them are just too uh, too big. You know, uh, too, yeah. um, um, it takes a lot of computing resources, so we cannot put them in in um, in um, for real time processing yet, but we're using some of mm -hmm. them for offline batch processing. So, offline, but yeah, gotcha. I used to think you know ResNet fifty or one hundred and fifty two was a big model, and then those language models come I know. out, and I'm like, yeah. is it going to cost you five dollars of GPU time just to infer you know one example? It's yeah. uh, the, the expense and the, the size are so so astronomical. Yeah. I was going to say um, you know we're um, you know, trying to, um, you know, really to um, optimize some of the, the large enterprise, uh, the language models, trying to, you know, um, make them smaller, quanti using, you know, quantization uh, or, mm -hmm. or um, distillation, uh, those techniques mm -hmm. to make the, those language yep. models uh, smaller so that we can use them uh, in our pr production environment. Yeah, yeah, interesting uh, challenge. It's it's so much more relevant on the large language model side than, than the computer vision right. side. Well, cool. Well, thanks for sharing some of those you know uses of machine learning in, in your in your cybersecurity product. Um, maybe if we could just turn a little bit to your background. How did you get into machine learning to begin with? Yeah. Um, so I I actually started um, 
machine learning in my graduate school, this was way back. Um, uh, uh, it was like early 2000, um, back when, you know, the AI was still not a, not a hot uh, field mm-hmm. yet. Uh, I was, mm-hmm. I was no. just uh, interested in uh, the, the math, um, you know, a, a part of aspect of, of AI. So I was naturally drawn to this AI and machine learning field. So, um, so uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I did, uh, I studied machine learning um, and computer security um, uh, at uh, uh, UC Davis. Uh, and that was mm-hmm. my PhD research. And after that, amazing. Yeah. So you're in the perfect job now. You I know, I know. Yeah. Security and machine that's learning. That's right. That's right. Yeah. This feels like uh, going back to my root. So after, you know, spending amazing. some, uh, uh, many years working at, um, at Microsoft, Facebook, Uber. And also at one point I even started my, uh, my, um, my own startup, um, Although that didn't pan mm-hmm. out, but but was still a great learning experience. You've been in machine learning so from the early two thousands. How have you seen you know the space evolve? And obviously, I'm a little bit deep centric, deep learning centric. So that's how I kind of view <laughs> the world of you know Alex set in twenty twelve. But maybe with you, you might be able to provide a broader perspective on on how the field has evolved. Right. I think um, in the early days, uh, I would say. Um, my first job was at a um, uh, financial service uh, company. Um, uh, this was, oh, oh my God, this makes me sound very really old. Uh, uh, I worked at a company, a startup uh, called ID Analytics, and they were doing, mm-hmm. they were uh, helping credit card companies to process uh, credit card applications, right? Uh, you know, using mm-hmm. building machine learning uh, classification models to to decide whether this particular credit card application should be approved or not. Right? And mm-hmm. I think back then, not many industries were using machine learning uh, you know, to, to, make this, uh, to make this kind of uh, decision. For one, they didn't have a lot of data or they were not capturing mm-hmm. a lot of data. Right? Um, and, and financial service industries, they were definitely one of the uh, early uh, industries, uh, early adopters. And then I think mm-hmm. the the internet service companies, um, you know, the online service companies like Facebook and, and Microsoft, they uh, they had a lot of data, right? And they were able to hire mm-hmm. people like me to, you know, to um, mm-hmm. to uh, help them, you know, making uh, uh, help them make you know intelligent decisions. To um, mm-hmm. for me, because I I started security, I always uh, had a, a special interest in. Uh, sort of um, uh, fighting against uh, you know bad guys, bad actors using machine learning. So, mm-hmm. so I worked on payment fraud detection, um, mm-hmm. fake accounts, and, and um, mm-hmm. ads. Uh, you know, low quality uh, accounts and ads at Facebook and Microsoft. So, um, so yeah, so we had a lot of data. You know, the comp- uh, and also the the um, good infrastructure. Uh, as well so um, mm-hmm. but now I definitely think uh, you know more and more companies uh, are trying to uh, adopt machine learning and AI as well right and not just the mm-hmm. you know the high-tech companies and, and not just you know cyber security and and also many other like including agriculture you know they're trying to uh, use uh, mm-hmm. you know machine learning to um, to solve some of their problems uh, I definitely think it's it will, uh, uh, it, it is becoming more and more ubiquitous um, you know, in terms of the mm-hmm. uh, ML use cases. Well, listen, Yuhua, thank you so much for for coming on and sharing. You know how ML is applied in cybersecurity. It, it's it's kind of um, really obvious what makes Netscope kind of a modern cybersecurity suite. You know, between its uh, kind of unique. Um, approach of routing traffic through your own proprietary data centers and then having that fire hose of data to be able to do much more powerful analytics to make sure you know all, all the uh, all the cybersecurity rules are, are being followed so thanks so much uh, for sharing uh, that sure. with us um, and where can we find you and Netscope uh, uh, personally or corporate on social media uh, sure so I'm on LinkedIn uh, you can you can find me on LinkedIn mm-hmm. I, uh, I often post uh some of our 
um, uh, blog posts as well as patents, um, uh, most, our most recent patents there. And you can um, uh, follow me there or, or send me a, um, a LinkedIn message. Um, and also, you know, if you want to learn more about Nescope, uh, you can go to our website and, and check out some mm -hmm. of the uh, white papers and so on. Cool, and that's N E T S K. -E, that's correct. Right? Yes. Awesome. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Yuhua. And I want to thank the audience for checking out this episode with Yuhua. If you enjoy this podcast, please give us a rating on Apple iTunes or Google Podcasts. It helps others find us. Until next time, thanks and goodbye.